Good morning, girls, and welcome to our Monday morning Heads Assembly. I hope you all had a lovely weekend. The weather wasn't so good on Saturday, but improved on Sunday. I hope you got a chance to be outside as much as possible, enjoying this time with your family. I know often in our assembly on Monday morning in Acton Hall, I ask you what you've done for the weekend, and we share um, our adventures, the positives over the weekend. We can't do that now, so be nice just for a moment, just to reflect on what you did this weekend. What was your highlight? What was the best thing you did this weekend? So just for a moment, just think about that. What are you grateful for? What did you enjoy this weekend? What we'd normally do um, at the beginning of our assembly is we would light a candle and we'd think about the upcoming week. What are we looking forward to? What are we maybe a little bit nervous about? So just for a moment, just think about this upcoming week. Think about the lessons you've got coming up. Think about um, maybe new things. Maybe you're doing your first um, violin lesson over Zoom, for example. Or you've got your first French lesson on Teams. So what are you excited about? And what are you also a little bit nervous about or apprehensive, perhaps? I want to start by saying a huge well done to everybody um, last week. I, I thought it was a remarkable week. We started on Wednesday, all apprehensive, a little bit anxious about how it was all going to work out using Teams. And I thought, and I hope you all agree with me, it was a fantastic success from having never used Teams before at the Easter break to now using it really, really effectively. And now I'm able, and some of you saw me because I dropped into your lessons, now I'm able to go into each class team group just to drop in, to say hello, I often did. And sometimes I was dropping in um, also just to see what was going on and get a feel for how the lessons were progressing. The teachers all met up on Teams on Friday evening and they, Mr. Taylor really helpfully talked us through um, any technical problems we had, and it was the feeling amongst the teachers that we were really, really happy with how it had gone. It can be improved. We get that. And um, we're a community of learners. And you girls are also important in giving us tips and saying what would work better for you. So do do that. Do have that conversation with your teachers, particularly those girls in, uh, in prep. But we feel it went fantastically. So thank you to the teachers. Thank you to, um, particularly thank you to Mr. Taylor and Mr. Severy for all the hard work they've been doing behind the scenes. And thank you to you girls for approaching it so positively and um, with great confidence, positivity and, um, and, and helping us through as well when, when things didn't quite go to plan from reception right the way through to year six. On a Monday morning assembly, I'd often do credits. So our heads award. We're going to start doing that next week. I thought it's good to settle in first, and then we're working out a way of doing that um, through Teams. At the moment, you get your house points through Teams. We've got, uh, you'll see um, a house point tab on your class team section. So keep an eye on which house is winning in your class. I've already given some house points out. One of particular note, note last week was, um, Anna Trapmore in year six sent through um, some of her coding that she'd done. She did a, a slow motion film behind the camera of her coding um, something, which then was sent to Miss Severy, which then came to me and I was really, really impressed. So well done, Anna. So do keep sending stuff through and we'll start credits next week. Our word of the week is confidence. Now confidence is one of our high performance learning words and it comes under, oh, I should put this to you, which character, which superhero character has confidence? or represents confidence as one of the areas they represent. Remember, we've got Agile Amy, Empathetic Emma, and Hardworking Holly. So which one do you think? It's Empathetic Emma. Remember what Empathetic Emma looks like. Empathetic Emma is collaborative. Think about what that means. She likes working in a team. 
She's concerned for society. So she wants to look after people, make sure everybody's looked after, taken care of. And she's confident. But what does that mean? What does being confident mean? And how are we going to live out being confident? How are we going to be more like empathetic Emma this week in our learning? We chose empathetic Emma. We chose confidence because we're going to need, well, we've needed lots of it already last week in the three day, first three, three days back. But we're going to need it this week again because we are, as I've said, we are learning in a completely different way. Well, no, we're not learning in a different way, but we're learning through a completely different method online. And we've needed confidence. So just think back to last week and think about moments where you found it difficult, where maybe you didn't have the confidence you would normally have in the classroom. How did you overcome that? Perhaps that was not wanting to be on the camera not wanting to speak up if you had the answer when somebody else was speaking because it was, it was difficult to get your voice heard. How did you overcome that? And then look forward to this week. How might you try and be more confident this week? For me, confidence is being sure of your ability knowing that you can do it. You might not be able to do it now, but you will be able to do it with hard work. And high performance learning tells us that if you're confident about your ability, if you're confident about the things you can do, you will get better at them because you're being positive. So confidence is a really, really important skill and you need to work at it. Now, everybody's got different personalities. Some people are more shy than others. Some people are naturally confident. If you are more shy, you do need to work at that. You need to challenge yourself. We don't want anybody to be scared or anxious, but you do need to challenge or push yourself a little bit sometimes. Some things that you think, I find that difficult. Well, that's what you should be doing. You should be having a go. In a school like St Mary's, when we, where we support and we love you and we want you to, do, to be your best selves, this is the place where you can do it. And you might make mistakes, and that's absolutely fine. We all make mistakes and we learn from them. And then we grow in confidence because we did it. We had a go. So I want to, you to challenge yourself this week to be confident, to have a go at things you find difficult, to make your voice heard. Now I'm going to read now from um, one of my favourite books. It's called The Truth Pixie. Lots of you know it. I've spoken about it before in assembly. Uh, and I've tried to do it. Um, I tried to do the book and I've read over the book, so you'll see the pages going, um, turning over as I read through it. And I chose this book because at the end of the book, it talks um, about the challenges we have in life. This has been a great challenge. We are still going through a challenging time and how we will come out of it at the end. There are dark times sometimes, but we will come out of it. So I hope you enjoy me reading this book and then we'll come back together after the book um, for a reflection and a prayer and look forward, looking forward to the rest of the week. In a land 2,000 miles from here is a place where snow falls all the year. There you find trolls and goblins and elves and talking rabbits rather pleased with themselves. Good day to you. Other odd creatures live there as well, like this truth pixie whose tale I shall tell. Truth Pixie's sad, and she's not like the others. She's not like her 19 sisters or 38 brothers. She's not like her brother Brian, who dances and sings. She's not like her sister Silver, with bright, shiny wings. She can't tell stories. She can't sing songs. She can't do magic. She can't write wrongs. In fact, for a pixie, she's quite peculiar. And the reason for that is her great auntie Julia. When she was young, Aunt Jay cast a spell. She said, from this day on, the truth you shall tell. To be the truth pixie, that is her curse. She must tell the truth, for better or worse. Imagine. Wherever she is, whatever the day, she only has one kind of thing to say. Just as cats go meow and cows go moo, the truth pixie can only say things that are true. It's good to never tell a lie. That's what people always say. But they probably never met the truth pixie on a cold midwinter's day. 
If she'd done something wrong, she'd have to confess. And if you look scruffy, she'd say, what a mess. So the pixie stays alone in her little yellow house with no friends except for a strange brown mouse. The mouse is called Marta and lives in her hair. Yes, that's right, her hair. Look, the mouse is there. Hello, I'm Marta. The pixie looks at her empty shelves. We must go to town to feed ourselves, the truth pixie sighs, as she puts on a shoe. She's ever so lonely, but what can she do? To make good friends, it shouldn't be hard. Invite them to dinner, send them, send them a card. Sing them a song or have a party, be super kind and dress really smartly. Well, poor TP, she's tried this and more, but now look, she's scared to leave her own door. No matter the card, no matter the song, something always goes wrong. Like the time she made dinner for an elf named Tinky and said that her breath was far too stinky. Or when she had a party for her sister Emily and sang happy birthday in front of her family. So her family get cross and never come back. And where there were friends, there is now a big lack. So the truth pixie decided along with her mouse, to give up on friends and stay sad in her house. Truth shouldn't hurt people, truth shouldn't surprise, but oh martyr it does, I wish I'd tell lies. When I go out I hope to see absolutely no one except you and me. The truth pixie looks in the mirror and tells herself, don't cry, as she wipes, even as she wipes, a lonely tear from her eye. And so she is off, walking fast into town, trying to look unfriendly and keep her head down. But oh no, what's this over here? An elf waving and grinning ear to ear. The truth pixie tries to hide inside a big bush and says to Marta, and says to her mouth, please Marta, shush. But it's too late, she knows it's true, because the elf is saying, how do you do? Of course, most people would say, I'm fine, have a nice day. And then they'd happily be on their way. But the truth pixie just can't be polite. The pi this pixie tells the truth, if, if it takes until night. So she breathes deep and closes her eyes. Well, I'm feeling dreadful, and that's no lie. And now that you ask, if you really must know, when I left the house, I stubbed my big toe. But that's not the trouble, not really, no. The trouble is, these truths just won't let go. Every elf or pixie who asks me a question gets a horrible truth I can't help but mention. So I'm stressed in bed and stressed on the loo, and the mouse in my hair has just done a... OK, right, says the elf, backing away. Is that the time? Maybe another day. Our pixie, poor pixie, weighs by and feels sad. I reply to their questions, but they just think I'm mad. I don't know how to stop doing what I do without answering questions with things that are true. The truth pixie carries on with her walking and hopes she won't have to do any more talking. I wish there was someone who could handle the truth, but there isn't, and my lonely heart is the proof. As she reaches the town, the road becomes busy. The truth pixie's fear of questions is making her dizzy. Do you like my hair? Another elf inquires. Hmm, it looks like a thousand ugly wires. What about my clothes? I got them from this great place. Well, to be fair, they're better than your face. The elf is angry and goes bright red. I hate you, Pixie. I wish you were dead. Along comes a rabbit, fluffy and brown, wondering about the truth Pixie's frown. Good day, Pixie. What are you thinking? The truth Pixie groans and speaks without blinking. I'm thinking rabbits, the oddest things ever, floppy eared, who aren't very clever. I'm thinking I wish they didn't go shopping when they can't even walk and insist on hopping. And I keep on stepping and they're gross round droppings. I'm sorry for the truth, but it's just not stopping. The truth pixie bites her own hands and runs down the street until she looks up and sees two massive feet. Too late, crash and bump. She bangs into her foot and a big warty lump. The foot is so huge and knobbly and wide the pixie feels fear all through her insides. I'm so sorry, I didn't see where I was going. But hey, look at that, I, I think it stopped snowing. truth pixie stares up and up to the sky. Her heart beats fast and there's no wondering why. The person she's met 
is no person at all, but a troll who's way over thirty feet tall. She knows of the troll. She's seen him before. He likes to start fights and is best to ignore. He picks up the pixie to take a close look. The truth pixie read about this in a book. She's pulled high up in the sky, trapped in his fist. Let me go to my house there through the mist. Oh, I bet you taste yum, the troll laughs. Your new house be soon in my big greedy tum. Wait, wait, Teepee squeaks. Don't be so hasty. I may look sweet, but I'm bony, not tasty. Mmm, grumbles the troll. Then please tell me, what can you do to stay out of my belly? The truth pixie gulps. The truth pixie is scared. The truth pixie knows, and the truth can't be shared. She tries to think as the troll's face comes near, but it's hard to think with a brain full of fear. Maybe, the troll says. You is not my food. Tell me a story, but make it good. Come on, speak up. What's the matter with you? The truth pixie sighs. It has to be true. He holds the poor creature and squeezes her tight. Oh, this is perfect. This be so right. You see, I scare every creature and every bird. So the truth be something I never have heard. But, says the pixie in a rather quick blurt, you should know that the truth can sometimes hurt. Well, listen now, Pixie, and listen hard. Look at my arms and look at how I be scarred. I'd be tough as rock and strong as stone. I've no fear in my blood and none in my bone. I eat monsters for breakfast and beasts for my tea. There's nothing that scares me. Don't you see? The truth won't hurt. I'm too tough for that. I'm no big, soft, fluffy, scaredy cat. Cat? says the mouse in Truth Pixie's hair, and she looks for a cat, but no cat is there. The troll keeps talking, with breath that does stink. Tell me, Truth Pixie, what do you think? The Truth Pixie tries to hold her mouth closed. She covers her lips and breathes out of her nose. But the truth is so strong, the truth can't be planned, and so the truth comes fast, and down goes her hand. What do you think? I have nothing to say. Ah, oh no, the words are on their way. I think you are lumpy and warty and stupid. I think you are smelly and ugly and putrid. I think you are dumb and not in a fun way. If you were a plane, you'd get stuck on the runway. I think your teeth are yellow and brown. I think you should be careful when you come to town. I think you too stompy and you make people shake. You're a giant horrendous walking earthquake. You eat people who, should really not, who shouldn't be eaten and once crushed a whole town in a land called Sweden. You're a nasty troll who smells like we and now I suppose you're still going to eat me. The truth pixie closes her eyes and waits to be lunch. The troll opens wide and is ready to munch. I be mad and I be cross. I show need to show who be the boss. I should eat you up, I really should, but you'll taste like the truth and that be no good. So the giant troll gets ready to throw and into the air the pixie does go. She flies over the field and over mountains. She flies over palaces and pretty fountains. She flies over horses eating hay and looks up at the sky and shouts, Nay! She spins and twists and rolls through the air as Marta grips on her fast blowing hair. She's thrown so far by that troll who is stinky that she arrives in a town now known as Helsinki. She drops through a window on the edge of town and sees a human in a dressing gown. The girl on the bed hugs a pillow patterned with foxes. She sits and cries in a room full of boxes. Who are you? says the girl. What are you doing? The truth pixie sighs. Is more trouble brewing? I'm the truth pixie and I was hoping you'd ignore me because I can't sing songs and I can't tell a story. Just as cats go meow and cows go moo, the truth pixie can only say things that are true. Far away is the home where I belong. I got thrown by a troll who found the truth too strong. I've upset two elves and a rabbit who hops. I hate this truth, it just never stops. I'm the most miserable thing you ever did see. I upset people by just being me. The girl smiles softly. 
I know the feeling. She looks sadly up to the ceiling. My name is Ada. It has three A's. We're moving house in just two days. The truth pixie, pixie feels bad. She can see the girl's truth. This is nearly her last night under this roof. There are other things too the pixie can see. Ada's hundred worries about what will be. You are the truth, Pixie. Tell me how this ends. Can I stay in this town with all my friends? Will my father keep his job? Will my gran get better? Was the doctor lying in his scary letter? The truth, Pixie, hears this and knows she can't leave. She must answer the truth, but make her believe. Listen, Ada, I know it's a blow. The answer to your questions, she says, is no. Ada goes pale. Ada can't speak. Ada feels scared and a little bit weak. The truth Pixie knows. She's made this day worse. She hates the truth. She hates the curse. She watches Ada get sadder and sadder, as if stuck down a hole without a ladder. Then the Pixie wonders if she can find a ladder of words for Ada to climb. Listen, Ada, I have something to say. The truth can be hard. That is its way. You will have to move house, as your dad has no money. You will have to lose friends, and that isn't funny. There will be people you love who can't stay forever. And there'll be things you can't fix, although you are clever. But listen hard and listen good. Life might not go as it should, but you are young and your life will be magic. It will be happy and funny and sometimes tragic. Don't forget who you are. You are a fighter, as the dark grey in the sky makes the star shine brighter. You will find the bad stuff has good bits too. The bad days are the days that make you, you. You can't always see goodness, but it's always there, just like the mouse who hides in my hair. If everything was perfect every single day, you'd never know the good from the just about okay. The truth is, truth is, your future will often be great. It's bad now you're seven, but wait till you're eight. You will make new friends as good as the old, friends who will warm your heart against the cold. The house you move to will be smaller than here, but you'll be so happy there this time next year. The best things of life are yet to come. You'll read great books and you'll have great fun. You'll have a pet cat you'll name after your gran. Cat, worries Marta, it's time I ran. The rest of your life is full of good stuff. You'll travel the seas, both calm and rough. It's up to you wherever you go, the sun of the desert, the cold of the snow. You'll, take, you'll eat ice cream tasting of strawberry and rose. You'll feel happiness from your head to your toes. You'll love your pet cat and she'll enjoy a cuddle. And you'll dance and sing and splash in a puddle. You'll have fun at Christmas and Easter too. In summer, you'll sometimes go to the zoo. You'll laugh at bad jokes and fall off a chair. Feel the sun on your face and the wind in your hair. You see, your life is like a voice. How you use it is really your choice. You can live as a mumble or sing it clear. But it will often be special. You'll be glad to hear. You'll have so many moments, whole years full of fun. That will be just waiting once these sad days are done. Sure, life isn't always one big smile, but things turn out fine when you wait for a while. Yes, as the, knock, as the night has dark bits, but it has stars too, and you'll feel when they shine that they shine just for you. You will step outside and see from the park that the light is brighter when it's next to the dark. You'll have so many great times ahead and soft, happy dreams from inside your bed. The future is changing, a life is a mix, and life's made of hope like a house is of bricks. And tonight, right now, you feel very sad, but the rest of your life won't be so bad. Ada listened and Ada heard. Ada hung on every word. Ada knows the pixie is right. The present is dark. But the future is bright. Thank you, Truth Pixie. You have made things clear. I will cry today, but I won't cry all year. It's all a little bit weird and a little bit mad, but you'll never know happy unless you know sad. 
Truth Pixie starts to feel a, a bit pleased. Ada gives Marta some very fine cheese. The pixie sighs, I guess I should go. The girl thinks hard and then says, no! The far north, says the pixie, is where I belong. But even if she, as she says it, she feels wrong. It feels wrong. Ada stands up and looks very serious. Listen, she says, it's not so mysterious. You've just said that life is what we choose. If you stay with me, you've nothing to lose. The truth pixie thinks. Truth Pixie ponders. Truth Pixie blinks. Truth Pixie wonders. With you, are you sure? What about your dad? Dad talks about pixies when he thinks I'm sad. He won't mind, he likes my friends. Really? says the pixie, and her heart starts to mend. But what about Marta when you get your new cat? Hmm, yes, we'll need to think about that. Maybe I'll get a dog instead. The future keeps changing. That's what you said. The truth pixie smiles from ear to ear. Her first actual smile in over a year. Thank you, Ada. Thanks for being you. Thanks for making me glad to be true. And Ada smiles back and looks out at the sky. The pixie is proud that she never did lie. Ada's father walks in and sees the creature there with its bright, big bright eyes and a mouse in its hair. Then he sees something stranger that he couldn't replace a smile on his daughter's once sad face. Oh, Pixie, he says, thank you a lot. Ada wanted to smile and now that's what she's got. You must stay with us if you've no better plan. Join us for supper, there's soup in the pan. Oh, thank you, says TP, you're so very kind. Can my mouse join us too, if you really don't mind? Ada laughs and her father laughs too. And the truth Pixie laughs and the laugh feels new. The Pixie still lives here, there to this day. Her truth no longer needs to hide away. That's the power of a loving friend. And here's the part where we say, the end. I hope you enjoyed that, girls. Um, it's such a wonderful book. I just want you to reflect on two pages of words um, and think about what's currently going on and, and think towards the future and how it will be. Things will get better. You'll laugh at bad jokes. You'll fall off a chair. Feel the sun on your face and the wind in your hair. You see, your life is like a voice. How you use it is really your choice. You can live life as a mumble or sing it clear, but it will often be special. You'll be glad to hear. You'll love so many moments, whole years of fun, that will be just waiting once these sad days are done. Sure, life isn't always one big smile, but things turn out fine while you wait a while. And we'll finish with our school prayer. Please join, join in with me. This is our school. Let peace dwell here. Let the rooms be full of contentment. Let love abide here. Love of one another. Love of mankind. Love of life itself. And love of God. Amen. Word of the week is confidence. And um, I look forward to seeing you through the week. Thanks for listening, girls. Have a great day. Bye bye.